Hey everyone. Slight change of scenery. I'm down at the shed at Mum's. Technically dog sitting, but the dogs are indoors. And as you can probably tell, it's rather dull and miserable out there. But I thought I'd start down here in the shed and work my way back to the house. Everyone's gone out, so it's only me here at the minute. So, one thing I haven't shown you yet, because I haven't had a chance, is this little e-bike that I swapped with Cat's Custom Trikes. Um, I just need to get a couple of small batteries for that box. As you can see, them ones are far too big. Besides, those ones go with the other e-bike, which is there with the grey basket on. <sighs> so I haven't got any way further with the moped. That's not changed. Uh, that pair of wheels goes to this rally, which is on here, which is hopefully going to be a future restoration project. You can see all the paint that's peeled here, but the frame is still good. Uh, a friend of mine gave me that. He was uh, working on a customer's hedge and his hedge cut found it apparently. <laughs> so, yeah. So I thought I'd g try to give that a new lease of life. That'll be a spring summer project because it's far too cold to spray. And uh, on a nice hot day I can spray it out there and or maybe hang it from up here and spray it and It'll dry in the sun. I'm being watched, look. There's Cassie on the left and Peggy on the right. <laughs> Bless them. See, if no one's here, Peggy, the little Jack Russell, she'll be barking and making all sorts of noise. There's some stuff here for the tip. There's the racing bike all broken up for bits. The BMX my brother stole it off me. <laughs> Get this door shut. Right. Got my lovely stepping stones down to the shed. I've got a big pile of wood here to make decking with when the weather's better. I've got a sort of pump house, I suppose, for the Pond, but we do have an issue if you look at all the filter barrels they're all sunk and leaning over so that's all got to be sorted out but uh, there is no fish but the pond is clear but uh, I haven't got round to putting the fish in it yet probably won't be till summer now either But uh, there's no point taking you over there because there's nothing changed in there. It's still a messy workshop. Uh, but I can show you the model railway room. There you go, it's all finished. It's been finished months but I haven't had the chance to, or the time to myself down here to give you the tour. I'm going to shut the door, it's bloody cold. So, it's looking probably not a lot like a layout at the minute. Because uh, it's still, uh, well, the main part of it, or the base I should say, is still uh, under construction. That helix is done. That's the first one he built. So the idea is, trains would go along, go in the top of this helix here, go all the way down to the bottom level here, all the way under all the way up that one and back along the top or vice versa whichever way you want your trains to go <clears throat> so yeah where all this crap is on there is, is eventually going to be part of the layout he's going to put shops and buildings and things i think on this one we're actually 100 percent certain there's the other bedford van that i had i'll let my stepdad keep that one I didn't want to and I'm sure that's a different shade of blue to the one he did for me. It might not be but it looks it. I just thought as I've already got one 
and this is roughly the scale that he needs for this. I said he could keep it. Um, he did recently get a box full of uh, random model railway stuff for a decent price as well. Uh, some tracks, some points, some wagons and things. That's not everything that came with it, it was full. Or some locomotives, that was one of them which he got working. That was another one which he got working. I absolutely love this thing, I think it's adorable. I think at the moment, out of all the steam engines he's got, because he has loads, there's actually a box over there. But, uh, <laughs> that's my favourite. Uh, he got this, this, that one doesn't work, it needs a spare part or a part replaced. I think he got that one as well. So yeah, this place is a mess. <laughs> but uh, it's typical of any work area, I think. They always get messy. Here's his little spray booth and all the paints he's been using. He's got a big box of them somewhere. There they are. Big box of paints. But, uh, I can't remember where he got this from. I think it was on Amazon. It's got a big fan in the back, which is what the power supply is for, and a big filter and air compressor. I don't know if that actually came with it, but... Yeah, it is really friggin' cold out here. Because there's no heater. There's that, but there's no gas for it. It's run out of gas again. There's the spotlights I've put up for them. Then I put an LED light up that end. It, well, a standard light fitting up that end. And I put these up here. And then I put that one up that end. But they are on separate switches. As in, I can turn the spots on and off, get the main lights on and off. Right, I'm going to make my way to the house because it's cool. And check that the dogs are alright. Your minds up. Whoa. It's certainly a lot warmer in here. I'm keep my boots off, I think. So I'm going to be wet with some mud. It's a bit dark in here, isn't it? I've got nowhere to put you while I take my coat off. I'll have to put you on the laptop. Like so. I don't think I'm going to get close enough to Cassie because she is, uh, I don't know, she's just scared of the cameras for some reason. No matter what sort of camera it is, she's scared of it. There's little Peggy. Peggy B. Cassie is on the sofa. And this is my little hangout with my laptop. wet, miserable, crap load of leaves that need cleaning up again. This is actually quite toasty in here. Still no carpet. I think mum does want to get carpet down here eventually. There's the most recent restoration my stepdad has done for me. My little rent -a set van and the back door does work and there is TVs in it. So, pretty happy with that. I've actually had that a number of years now. I never thought I'd see the day that it was actually restored. Where are you off to? 
Right, well I'm going to shut the camera down and I will be back when I get back to mine later because there's a few things I want to show you there as well. So, talk to you later. Well, I was getting myself a drink. What's the time now? It's 9.49. So it's been... I knew that bugger was going to do that. It's probably been about 11 hours since I last turned the camera on. First the light was humming and now it stopped. Oh. Feeling a bit peckish as well, but I'll get something to eat later, I think. A bit too early. <laughs> Didn't want that knife, obviously. Oh put this in the fridge while I'm in here. <clears throat> I haven't actually long been home. Uh, not quite an hour. Probably about 45 minutes I've been home. Actually not even that. Probably about half an hour. I'd say it was probably about 9.15 when I got in. So half an hour, 40 minutes, something like that. Like I said, not long. Oh, so, what I've got to show you is in the bedroom. And I've just realised that what I said could be construed in a very um, inappropriate way. <laughs> right. Do you what? I'm going to put this down by the PC. Dark Pepsi, not really my favourite, but still got more taste to it than Dark Coke. I just find Dark Coke to be so tasteless, to be honest. But yet, I've, I know people personally that actually think it's one of the tastiest things going, you know. Anyway, a uh, couple of things in the bedroom. I've got a bracket made up for the railway lamp that um, Cold Start Daily very kindly gave me. Oh, there it is. I've actually got some lamps to give him as well. So I'm going to set that down here for a minute. Now, I've got a place to hang it, but it's a bit too late at night to do what I want to do. I just want to reinforce it, so I'm going to go up the ladder and just show you. That's what I've done. I've had a bit of a shift around up here. Taken out the excess screws that I had up here when I had uh, some JSP lamps hanging up here actually. Moved this cone light along. Screwed the bit of MDF up there and what I need to do is fix that loose bit of MDF behind there to the wall. Which means I've got to take this off again. And then screw this back on there. A couple of screws in there because I find that this is flexing quite a bit under the weight of that lamp um, it's not making any noises like it wants to snap or anything but and it's actually been hanging up there for a good 24 hours but uh, I don't want to risk it because if that come down on my head it will hurt so that's done oh yeah found some more Hot Wheels I've got to the end of the shelf now Found this uh, Mark II Golf in Sainsbury's. It's a little Honda Civic as well. And that, uh, I'm not sure what that truck is. An 87 Dodge D100. So, uh, yeah, that's got me right to the end of the shelf. So, what am I going to do now? I've got nowhere to hang them. I'll find somewhere to hang them. I don't want to put them on that shelf because I want to get some more uh, preferably some more older matchboxes like this just to go along that top shelf so I will be moving these two Nissan cone lights Coney lights Coney lights I can't remember how you pronounce it now and the other thing I've done is start to put that fluorescent light up there 
Um, only one screw hole is actually plugged with one of these. The other screws I've just stuck in there temporarily. So I do need to take that down again and just uh, drill out the screw holes. Pop those plugs in and screw it back up and it'll be up there good and secure. I wanted a longer light up there but I actually think it would be too long to be honest. I wouldn't have minded that one up there but as you can see the screws go through the side. Not where I need them to go to put it to a ceiling because this is actually an under cabinet lamp. I would have gone under your kitchen cabinets years ago. I think I've got three of them. So I've got that one there. And then I've got a really short one in the closet in the hallway. Um, yeah, so I need to get cable for that. Another switch box because I'm fairly certain I've got a light switch. And some clips and that is it. Because... Uh, being a metal light fitting, I need to um, use the earth, so I've got to get a three core cable. Which isn't much more than what I paid for the two core cable that I did that one with. But uh, of course, I can't use a leftover two core cable because it is two core. I need three. If you're going to do a job, do it properly. <laughs> That's the way I see it. Um, this, oh, this, this is going to be hung in the hallway and I think I'm going to go for it on this wall. Uh, <laughs> main reason is, even though I do like having that on its homemade stand, and I will keep that stand in case I want to put it back on there. Um, but I'm finding I'm just moving it around the bedroom every time I need to get somewhere. Because I guarantee if I put it up that corner where the ladder is, I'm going to have to move it to get to like the games or the window or something, or the lamps up there. And if I stick it up here, I've got to move it to get to everything up here, so... Yeah, I decided I'll take it off its stand, but I will put that in the outside closet and keep it. Uh, I'll find some long screws. One long screw will do. And just hang it on this wall. Uh, I'm not pot screws here, I? but I'm going to need some more long screws. I'm hoping these will be long enough because I've got another railway lamp winging, winging its way to me uh, in the mail. Thanks to another collector of mine, I'm sure he's got a YouTube channel, but I can't remember his name. His YouTube name. I'm not actually sure I know his YouTube. I'm not even sure now that he's actually got a YouTube, but anyway, he's um, a fellow collector and uh, a friend of mine, acquaintance of mine, and um, he linked me to this lamp on eBay, and it was a steal of a price. Um, it's probably the same height as this. About, I don't know how high this is, but I believe it's 86 centimeters the one that I've bought, and it's got... Um, Two red lamps on one side, two amber on the other side. It's basically like these. But in a big board rather than two separate lamps. That's what it is. Um, and it was $29.99 plus free postage. Uh, considering I have seen them go for more and with a postage charge, I thought I would uh, nab that one be a nice uh, bulky one for my collection so hopefully these screws are going to be long enough uh, let's just have a look shall we if I do that cool yeah it's got to clear this bit that's all it's got to clear and the base as long as it clears that but yeah that's plenty long enough so if it's long enough for that it should be long enough the slab I'm getting is made by Dorman and it's actually called a Dorman Marker Board Mark II LED. There is a Mark I, which uh, I would love to get at some point in the future as well. Um, there's no battery or battery box, but if I'm going to hang it on this wall, I'm not that fussed. I will get it working. It's not going to be hard to get it working. The maximum voltage it's likely to be is 12 volts, so... I can try it on a 6 volt battery, if it doesn't work, I'll try it on two 6 volt batteries. Simple. 
I'm sure I can rig up some wires to make it work, so... And I could probably sit a couple of batteries in it up there so I could have it on there. And the best thing is I could turn it around so I could have... If I get bored with the amber side showing, I can turn it around and have the red side showing. So, that's the plan to put that one and this new one when I get it up on this wall. The new one will have to go horizontally. I can't have it going that way because the handle is actually between both lamps. So, yeah, you carry it in a horizontal position as well. So I thought two screws in the wall for that. The handle will go straight over them. Job's done. It'll hang on the wall. Well, that might be a bit difficult on this wall because it is a plasterboard wall. I might see if I've got any more of them plugs, actually, that I'm using in the ceiling. Because they seem to grip the ceiling really, really well. Really well, actually, so... I'm just going to see if I've got a few more. I'm not going to need that many more. And that's what I'm... No, that is not what I'm using in the ceiling. It's these ones. That's what I'm using in the ceiling at the minute. I'm going to use four. I don't really need four for that light, but... I'm going to put four up there anyway. So I've got three. That should be enough for these two lights. Because I've got to remember that they're not... Well, actually that one I've got in the bedroom at the minute, that's not that heavy. But I don't know about this marker, marker board. I don't know how heavy that's going to be. Probably not that heavy, actually. It's got a metal, um, metal clamp on it for it to clamp to the railway track. Because it's a... Uh, what the railway service call a um no they don't call it a meow <laughs> they call it a um, possession lamp i think that's what they basically call all their lamps sort of a possession -y lamp oh yeah i've got a selection of weird looking plugs them gray ones aren't they but these should do what I did have for that light actually is a metal plasterboard fixing, but uh, I did an absolute classic thing that I'm sure most of us have done. I had it in my coat pocket because I picked it up from mum's. It was the last one that was in the pot. So I thought if anything, you know, I'd have a good fixing up there, at least one good fixing up there to hold this light on. Because I didn't realise at the time that I had these wonderful little plastic plugs that work really well. Um... So I brought it home in my coat pocket, and yesterday, because I stayed at home yesterday, I took it out of my pocket, and I thought, I need that for this light, I'm going to put it somewhere safe, so I know where it is, ready to use it. Still haven't found it, and this was yesterday afternoon. <laughs> I don't know where it is. <laughs> so it's that classic case of, put it somewhere safe, and forget where that safe place is. So, uh, but that doesn't matter now because I found these um, plastic alternatives. And, uh, I, I don't know. Looking at the design, maybe they are designed for plasterboard because they're quite long. And I've got a feeling these tabs spread out behind the wall. So it sort of locks it in. Because plasterboard isn't actually um, that thick. It's probably only about that thick. Literally, probably the depth of that part of this plug. So I'm actually wondering, I don't even know where these come from. It's just some plugs I've thrown in my pot in the kitchen from somewhere. Um, so I'm, see, I don't know where they come from or what they were supposed to be used for. I'm just guessing purely on that, on the way they look and on their design that they probably are plasterboard fixings. I think this bit is oddly actually brick. That's a partition wall, drywall, rock wall, whatever you want to call it. We just call it a stud wall over here because underneath it is wooden studs. And then the plasterboard goes on top and then they give it a quick skim of ordinary plaster to hide the joins. So when you paint it and decorate your walls, you just have a nice clean surface. You don't see the joins, same as the ceiling. Apart from in here, you can actually see a joint. You see that line running right across there, and the one right across there. So, oh, there's another one there. Actually, is that the join line? Actually, I think that's the join line. That might just be a crack. 
So it actually looks like the ceiling in here was done in three, maybe four pieces, because I can see another line right across here. And a crack, look at that, right by the fan. Some cracks did actually appear one day when there were some men up in there working for victory. Um, would have been nice if they actually notified me, because, uh, you know, scared the crap out of me by banging around up there. <laughs> It's not the noise that bothered me, it's the fact that I had no idea anyone was going to be up there. And at first I was like, what the hell is that noise coming from up there? But, uh, yeah, there's a crack here that appeared as well, I don't know if you can see it. Somewhere there. That appeared, and they were banging around up there. Since I replaced the battery in that poxy thing, that has stopped beeping on me. I think that was last week, I came home and literally about 15-20 minutes after I got home BEEP! Every two minutes that would beep and I just thought, I'm not putting up with that all night <laughs> So I had to do something with it, I actually pulled the bracket off the ceiling It's got a back plate that goes on the ceiling that the alarm then clips to, so you just unclip it, change the battery Well that's the theory, you unclip it, change the battery I've got blind Nemo. That was the cat. That wasn't me. <laughs> Not that you care, do you? Yeah, oh, trying to get it off was an absolute ass. <clears throat> You'd have thought, as they're always encouraging people and reminding people to change the smoke alarm battery, that all manufacturers, because I have heard that some of them are actually a lot easier than others, but you would have thought all manufacturers would have made it an easy job to change the friggin' battery. It's mains operated, but the battery is there as a backup if the power goes out for whatever reason. And obviously over time, a battery will just go dead whether it's uh, being used or not. Um, but the old one, that, was put, that alarm was replaced three years ago because my other one went folly. It actually went off at 10 o'clock in the morning. So um, that was actually quite scary and I woke up to a smoke alarm going off but thankfully it was a false alarm because that just got triggered and it would not shut off. You got the button underneath it that you're supposed to hold down and it would, you know, go silent and go off. It wouldn't. I actually had to take it off the ceiling, take the battery out and that's the only way I could shut it up. And it did it on a weekend so I couldn't actually well, even if I report it to Victory, they wouldn't have been able to do anything until the Monday anyway. But as soon as I report it, pretty much that morning, they had an electrician out and replaced it. But anyway, the battery lasted three years, the backup battery. But it wasn't Duracell. I've put a cheapy thing up there for now. I'll see how long that lasts. I was going to change it for a, a better one, like another Duracell, but I thought, well, that one's working, I might as well just leave that one up there until it starts beeping at me again and then change it because it is such a ass. although the replacement date is for another three years so I suppose if I stuck a Duracell in there in theory by the time <laughs> that battery goes dead again it would be time to replace the unit anyway because I think they've got like a well, what did I say that was put up about three years ago well, it's not a very long lifespan for a smoke detector, is it? Six years. I'm sure that's three years ago that that was put up. Three or four years ago. I'm going to stick with three years. I'm pretty certain that's all it was. I should have an installed on date on them, shouldn't they? Unless it has and I didn't see it. And scarily, it's only held up there with one screw. <laughs> only one plug in the ceiling. Whoever stuck it up there before literally screwed it in using one plug, one wall plug, and then just screwed the other screw straight into the ceiling. So the other screw is just not doing anything. <laughs> so I've put it back the same way it come down. <laughs> it's no wonder I pulled it off the ceiling trying to get it off its bracket. <clears throat> but we actually had an interesting conversation on one of the admin group chats that I'm on. Um, one of the admins said, you know, when theirs do that, they just take the alarm off the ceiling instead of buying a new battery for it. But in my eyes, you know, a half-decent battery is going to cost you 99p, 
pound. You know, if you want something a bit better, it might cost you one ninety nine. Might cost you one ninety nine for two. They're not expensive. The nine volt batteries for that. Um, and I'd rather spend that every sort of two or three years than uh, risk my own life. So. I don't mind that. Thankfully, I actually had a 9 volt battery kicking around here that was spare, so that was actually fully charged. So, I have noticed 9 volt batteries are very prone to this, more than a little like um, AA 1.5 volt batteries. I've had some kicking around for absolute years and they've still kept a charge and were still usable. 9 volt batteries, I bought some, I think they're a Polaroid brand last year, and I just left them in a box in this cupboard, and one of them was dead. And I hadn't used it. It just sat there. I'd opened it up. Because uh, I bought them for some of my Lego models. Because there's some up here that have lights and sound that require the 9 volt battery. And <laughs> once I'd done with them, I'd, you know, I'd taken the battery out. Put them in the box. And it just gone dead. Just like that. And I've had several do that. They just seem to go dead. More than your humble AA, AAA, D and C cell batteries. And I can have these kicking around for a good two or three years and they will still hold charge and still be usable. In fact, I think I've got some that I've had for four or five years. Obviously they do lose a charge eventually, like all batteries. I've even got a six volt battery here which has actually passed its sell by date which is still fully charged. And I still use it to play around with battery play around with batteries, play around with my road lamps and whatnot. I don't really know what to call this collection anymore because it's sort of a stepped away from barricade lamps because I've got these. This isn't really a barricade lamp is it? You know it's not designed to bolt to a barrier or a barricade. Uh, see I don't know which is the best term to use there either because I know Americans call them barricade lamps and we just call them road lamps over here or roadworks lamps. I'll just keep using both terms, I think. It's what I have done all this time, so... You know, why change habits? <laughs> There's even some for the emergency services in here. They don't bolt to cones or barriers either, so... But I guess they all fall under the same category, don't they? It's just a form of warning, like... Oh, the battery just dropped another bar. I thought I was seeing things. Right, well I think I've rambled on enough, so I'm going to give your ears a rest, my tongue a rest, <laughs> and uh, shut this video down. I've got some video editing to do, I need to edit a video for the LEGO channel ready for tomorrow, or after midnight. Sometimes I'll upload after midnight, sometimes I'll leave it till I get up. Um, this channel is sort of a, a whenever at the minute because I just haven't got anything to do. It's that wrong time of year. You know, I'm not going to car boots, so I'm not bringing any stuff home to, you know, do a show and tell video, so to speak. Uh, I haven't got any, well, I don't really like showing the Lego on this channel because that's what I've got the Brick Nut 30 channel for. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to think of something though, so I don't have to just do these sort of vloggy type videos all the time. Because I get bored of them myself. I want to do something different. I want to film myself fixing something. I'll have to find something. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching guys. I will talk to you all again in the next video. Bye.